you want to know. Can you hear me now? Good morning, folks. Good morning. Oh, come on, it's Saturday morning. We can do better than that. Good morning, folks. Good morning. That's what I like to hear. A good lively crowd. Good to have you with us here this morning. Welcome to Silver Dollar City and on this beautiful Saturday morning for our Silver Dollar City American Music and Craftsmanship Festival. And it's great to have you all here with us. What a good looking bunch we got here this morning. How many folks, this is your first time to be here ever? Uh, okay, what about the first time this week? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. We have a lot of regulars come out here for our music festival and our crafts festival, and, and we appreciate that very, very much because that's what keeps things going here. People who like the crafts and people who enjoy listening to good bluegrass music, which we've got a bunch of today, uh, I want to remind you to get around and get you a show schedule if you don't have one for some of you folks that are just getting here. Uh, uh, now, there has been a couple changes on the show schedule. Oh, by the way, the show schedules are usually by the show clocks that are around everything theater every location you'll find them throughout silver dollar city if you can't find one just ask somebody they'll show you where they're at now that's the show schedule is the one that's got the brown writing on it and if you get one with the orange letters on it that's a map that'll tell you where to get where you want to go so this one will tell you how to get there and this one will tell you what you're going to see when you do get there so grab your show schedule and the map so you can get around and enjoy everything here at silver dollar city this morning now one schedule change we have on our schedule today the 9 15 sheep milking that's not going to happen until 10 o'clock because of the, the early opening here at silver dollar city which by the way i want to tell you all so on saturday we always at 20 after nine we always raise the flag salute america and the flag and then drop the change about 9 30 so you can go any place on silver dollar city that you want to and have all the fun that you want to have i want to remind you about that also there'll be no uh, mule jumping today it's not on the schedule they had a previous engagement so you folks who can't see the mule jump come back some other time this is the only day that he's not going to be here jumping the mule and that's pretty good too you boys see that mule jumping oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to hunt mules, you know, have hunt mules, and we jumped fences and stuff with them. That's many, many years ago, but that's sort of where that came from, isn't it? Yeah. And these boys know about it too, because they're from around Joplin, Missouri. You got any folks here from Joplin? Yeah, right over there. <laughs> they got big cameras in Joplin, don't they? That's good. I like that. Yeah, great to have you all here, and great to. Are you ready for some good bluegrass music this morning? Hey! All right, when I met these folks, they told me we've got serious comedy and hilarious bluegrass. And I believe that, boys. I like your music, and they like to have lots of fun. Make a welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from Joplin, Missouri. No apparent reason.
we got a rowdy crowd today, guys. Uh, it's starting out to be a good one, I tell you. We're so glad to be here. We are no apparent reason. From uh, We're Southwest Missouri boys, and uh, we're just tickled to death to be here. Welcome to Silver Dollar City. We hope you have a great time today. We've been blessed with some good weather, and uh, we need some rain, though, that's for sure. But uh, been dry. It's been dry. How, you know, dry, it been? how dry has it been, John? I catfishing last night and caught one that had a tick on it. Oh, <laughs> That's pretty dry, man. That's pretty dry. Well, you know, I was talking to the sheriff, the marshal, just a while ago. Apparently, somebody uh, broke into his office last night and right here at Silver Dollar City stole the uh, toilet right out of his bathroom. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't nothing wrong with it. Somebody just came in there. He had it was brand new, actually and uh, stole the toilet right out of there, so, so far the uh, police have nothing to go on. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a song for you now. Uh, John Hartford wrote this song for Glenn Campbell many years ago and uh, kind of put old Glenn Campbell on the map. It's called Gentle On My Mind.
that song, Mr. Hartford, we uh, lost him here just a few years back, and uh, he'll be missed because he wrote a lot of good tunes. Well, let's see. Randy, you doing okay today? I didn't get to talk to you last night much. Yep, doing good. How's Cindy doing? Doing pretty good. 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 What did he do to his thumb? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody must have done that during the night. You must have. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. What did you do to your thumb? I can't remember what the doctor called it. HHD, he said. That's the doctor I had to go to him here about oh, a week ago, and uh, he called it the hitchhiker's disease. <laughs> and, uh, you I used to do a lot, of that. Down a lot man. Yeah, yeah. Is Cindy doing better? Cindy's doing pretty good, yeah. Good. Good. You know, uh, it's kind of a hard thing to talk about, so. Well, do you feel like talking about it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my wife here just a few weeks ago was up fixing breakfast, like every good wife should. <laughs> and uh, ladies, you may have had this happen before, the grease come off the bacon and get on your hands or this or that pop up. I've heard of it. And, uh, You've never cooked though, have you? No. <laughs> um, but anyway, this happened to my wife Cindy and it, it was really bad and it came up on her cheeks and burned her cheeks fairly bad. and. I had to take her to the hospital, and the doctor there referred us to a specialist. You know how they do that. And we went to the specialist, and he uh, looked at Cindy's face, and he said, I believe I can help you, but I'm going to have to have a skin donor. You know, I thought, well, me being her husband, I'd just be that don donor. Really? Yeah. You're a good guy. Buddy. I know. <laughs> now, I can't tell you where they took the skin from. I couldn't sit down for almost a week. It not look like I had much to work with. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a few weeks passed and we went back to the doctor and he set my, my wife Cindy down and handed her a mirror and started taking the, the bandages off her face. And when he got the last one off Rick, her face was so soft and pretty. Soft as a baby's. Yes, yes. And she looked at me with a tear in her eye and she said, oh Randy, how can I ever thank you? You know, I thought for just a minute, I said, you know, the next time your mother comes to visit and she kisses you on the cheek, that'll be thanks enough for that.
our picture taken. Yeah. The show is there. Like <laughs> yes, they don't let us play around home much. They know what's there. That's why we're all here today. So. No, we're having a ball. Y'all having fun so far? Oh, yeah. Good, good. This is a rowdy crowd. Yeah. Hey, man. Bluegrass rules. Bluegrass rules. Yeah. yeah. We're all gone. Be nice. <laughs> good. Well, there was these, uh, you know, these, uh, speaking of bluegrass, you know, and they, the roots of bluegrass comes from, uh, you know, the Appalachian Mountains and that. And there's these folks, they lived way back in the hills, and they went to the big city. And uh, they'd never been into a, a big city as big as this one they were in. And they walked into this huge mall. It was several stories. And the Paul and the boy, they went one direction, and Ma and the daughter went the other direction. And Paul was walking around there, and he seen these big metal doors. And he seen uh, this little old lady with the cane. She was walking along there, and the big silver doors opened up. And she went inside this little room, and those big silver doors closed. And a couple minutes later, the big silver doors opened, and this real pretty young girl comes walking out. <laughs> he stood there just as wide-eyed as he could be, and he said, Son, go get your ball. <laughs> to him there. <laughs> We're going to do a gospel song for you. Cowboy Church in the Mines. No. Oh, that one. We get a lot of requests for this one here. I was on, sorry, I was on the wrong list. <laughs> Sunday. Bills of smoke came rolling from the door. And I ran up to tell the leading deacon, something needs done because the church is on fire for sure. He said that's a point well put and a timely suggestion. We'll bring up at the very next meeting of the board of deacons week from Tuesday. I don't know why, it's just church policy. Seventh-day Orthodox Lutheran Non-Denominational Church of Our Lady of the Mind. Well, we got together the very next Sunday in a tent lot paid for by the building fund. And I stood up to tell the congregation there's a tornado coming. That's a point well put and a timely suggestion. We'll bring up at the very next meeting of the Board of Deacons a week from Tuesday. I don't know why, it's just church policy. At the first as a method, back to Gospel, Seventh day Orthodox, Lutheran, non denominational church of Our Lady of the Mind. When the trumpets sounded and the clouds were rolled away And I stood up to tell the congregation Lift up your head for the Lord has come today She said that's a point well put and a timely suggestion We'll bring up at the very next meeting of the Board of Deacons A week from Tuesday I don't know why, it's just church policy Seventh-day Orthodox Lutheran Non-Denominational Church of Our Lady of the Mind. Amen. That's too much fun. Too much fun. So, what can I tell you about going down to Arkansas a couple of weeks ago? No. In my life? No. It was the weirdest thing. We, uh... My wife and I just sometimes we get bored and we just go driving. And we was down in Arkansas somewhere and we send this come into this little town and we noticed a beautiful little cemetery over here. And right in the middle was a great big tombstone with no writing on it. Not not a date, a name or anything. 
Oh, that's that one down in Eureka. Right. Yeah. No, yeah, that one. Uh huh. We stopped in this restaurant and we talked to the waitress there and asking her about that. She goes, "Well, that's kind of a weird deal." She said, uh, "Many years ago, uh, this man was born and his parents named him Odd, odd. and he and he hated his name his whole life." <laughs> yeah, Odd. Yeah, I heard that. They told me that story. So. I guess all of his life he told people when he passed away he didn't want anything put on his tombstone, he just wanted it blank. But she said it kind of backfired on him. He says, you know, people drive into town and see that with no name and they say, isn't that odd? That is odd. You're kind of odd too, buddy. But you know, that same cemetery, there, I don't know, did you tour the whole cemetery? No, that was all I could stand. I mean, <laughs> that's all you saw. <laughs> well, on back farther underneath them big trees back here, there was another tombstone back here. It must have been a hypochondriac because down here at the bottom it said, told you I was sick. <laughs> well, that, that reminded me of the Indian brothers. Oh, no. Why is he? <laughs> One more, please. <laughs> were born, they were twins, and uh, I'll, I'll say it real fast, and um, they were born, and when they got old enough, their, their father sent them out on expeditions for supposed to be four days, and the one brother, I think his name was Running Horse, came back in four days, but the other one, his name was Fallen Rock, never came back. They sent different uh, parties out looking for them, you know, and I guess today it's just went on for many, many years. You can still see that they're looking for him. Uh, anywhere you drive in this great oh. country of ours, you'll see a sign that says, Watch for Fallen Rock. <laughs>
looks mighty fine. I just really enjoyed it. I like that watching them folks dance out there. They were pretty good at it, too. You guys done that before, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> First time, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you, you was talking about how uh, Cindy's face got burned. Yeah. Well, it just made me start thinking about medical stories. I had a little uh, minor surgery here a while back, and I and guess when they, when you, I'd never done it before, so when they put you, after surgery, they put you in this other little room to keep an eye on you. I guess that's called the recovery room. And uh, they put me right next to this window, and when I woke up, I noticed that the window was there, but the curtains were drawn and the blinds were closed. So when the doctor come in to check on me, I was asking him if he, uh, it was okay, you know, why was the windows all closed up? He said, oh, that, well, there's a big fire across the street. We didn't want you waking up from the anesthesia thinking that the surgery had failed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Thank you so much. The doctor knew. He knew me, yeah. Yeah, he's a family doctor. <laughs> Little Cowboy Church in the Pines. CDs for sale, and uh, we've got T-shirts, and we're real proud of this. We were real proud of this first CD we got, and uh, it's gone aluminum, so we're excited. <laughs>
No apparent reason, dude. You're a great job. How about giving him another big hand this morning? I'll tell you what.